This week's episode is very kindly sponsored by World Anvil. Stick around at the end for more information. Hey everybody, I'm Daniel from Space Dock, and I want to talk about how to rule the galaxy with an iron fist through fear, which I hope is advice you will never be able to take advantage of. Now, a very popular trope in science fiction is the grand and powerful evil empire, whose main weakness is that they prefer tactics of intimidation to actual tactical military strategies, and their military is generally built in a more kind of ceremonial and intimidating fashion that plucky rebel groups are able to then take advantage of to win the day. The most obvious example of this is the Galactic Empire from Star Wars, more specifically with the Tarkin Doctrine, which basically calls for an entirely fear-based military system in which intimidating capital ships and vast numbers of strike fighters, none of which are particularly good on their own, are used in huge numbers to make the Empire seem so impossible to defeat that nobody would ever dare try and rise up against it. And the ultimate expression of this was eventually the Death Star, which would hopefully serve as the ultimate deterrent by threatening to destroy the planets of anyone who dares rebel. Now let's compare this to another example of the same thing, that being the Goa Uld Empire from Stargate, who, rather than ruling for something like 14 years and then being toppled by the Rebel Alliance, in fact ruled for thousands of years unopposed, before eventually being toppled by the Tauri. They both operate on the same kind of tactics of fear and intimidation and ceremony, but it's worked much more effectively for the Gold, not just in-universe, but also, I think, as a narrative trope. In the case of the Gold, it's far more believable. And the crucial difference is this. The Gold Empire has maintained an essentially medieval, uneducated population of peasantry across the galaxy. The average citizen, so to speak, of the Gold Empire is basically an agricultural worker who has never seen any advanced technology in their life because the gold keep all of that technology away from them and don't even allow them to develop basic writing skills for fear that they will eventually develop into something more advanced. The entire gold empire is a very small substrata of system lords and underlords with their individual Jafar armies ruling over an enormous population of people who are kept so profoundly ignorant that they actually don't really know that they're not free. They vastly outnumber their oppressors, but they don't know that they're oppressed. They lack the perspective and context to ever rise up against them or organize themselves. There's an interesting dichotomy in Stargate where, essentially, there are basically two states of technology you can exist at. The medieval state that is maintained within the peasantry of the Gold Empire, and the state the System Lords are in, wherein they use inherited technology from the Lantians, and stuff that they salvaged from when those guys were around. Nobody's really developed their own stuff, for thousands of years. And for that reason, equipment like P90 submachine guns and grenades, like what the Tauri have, is completely alien to everyone, because nobody's ever been at that intermediary stage. The scattered humans of the Empire are never allowed to develop that much, and the Gold were given better technology from the start, or theoretically better technology. It's better in some ways, but not all. And the result of this is that a lot of their technology has vulnerabilities to ballistic weapons, because they're an unexpected new factor. And they only happened because one planet, that being Earth, was allowed to slip through the net and develop its own equipment and weapons and technology off the grid. And as soon as this happens, this one small power in the form of the Tauri, is able to quite easily topple the Gold Empire, which sort of simultaneously exists in a state of total domination and very, very fragile control, because their entire power base is built around nobody having the wherewithal or equipment to resist them. If you're a random peasant on a gold agricultural planet like Abydos or whatever, you're mining Naquida or farming something, and a bunch of Jafar turn up led by a gold system lord with glowing eyes and golden armor and a staff that shoots fiery death at people, and the most advanced piece of technology you've ever seen in your life before now is a wheelbarrow, you're gonna think they're a god and you're going to be damn scared of them, and you're not going to resist them. And this works in this case, but when the Empire from Star Wars tries to do the same thing to an educated population that only five years earlier was in the middle of the Clone Wars and living under the Republic, it's never going to work. They try to make the transition too fast. The people of the Star Wars galaxy, as depicted, are too intelligent and self-aware to accept oppression without resistance or question. So the Galactic Empire should have treated their rule as having an inevitability of rebellion, that they would need to resist with an organized and effective military rather than a tool of intimidation and ceremony. And that's why it feels disingenuous and unrealistic that the Empire would be this way and that that would be its excuse 
for the narrative allowing the good guys to defeat them. In the case of Stargate, it's totally believable. I fully buy that the Tauri have this advantage over the gold because they are so unprepared for any threat to the status quo, because it's literally been thousands of years since they've ever even had to imagine any threat to themselves, since they've ever had to develop a single tool that did anything other than scare people, and since any of their soldiers have ever had to do anything but march into a mine or farm and scare people into not resisting, or fight in largely ceremonial territory wars with other system lords. The Gold Empire requires a much smaller suspension of disbelief to accept that they would be defeatable by the underdog heroes. And that's simply not the case in Star Wars, where it seems like the Empire would just assume that nobody would ever resist them if they scared them enough, which most of the time just galvanizes resistance against them, like it did with the destruction of Alderaan, when you have an educated population ready to stand up against you. So, if you do want to rule the galaxy through fear, my advice to you is to be a immortal, snake-headed parasite creature that can exist for a great many generations, prevent any of their subjects from developing basic writing skills, ensuring that they all exist in total ignorance, scaring them now and then, and keeping them away from any kind of complicated technology. And I think this is generally good advice for any writers watching in the audience. Try and avoid what Star Wars does. Don't write an evil empire with an educated population that has a degree of autonomy and freedom that assumes that nobody will ever take any offence with their oppression or do anything about it. Because a fledgling empire with a diverse population like that would be well served to be prepared for that kind of resistance. And it makes them just slightly weaker villains if they're not. Thank you for listening. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Many thanks to World Anvil for kindly sponsoring this week's video. World Anvil is a tool set for novelists and writers and RPG campaigners that essentially makes constructing and maintaining the fiction of fictional worlds a little bit easier with helpful continuity tools like timelines and interactive maps and systems for creating a number of sort of wiki style articles to record the details and fluff of your fictional world. You can use World Anvil in of itself to create a showcase of your fictional world, or you can use it as a crutch for another external project like a novel or an indie film or anything else that you might be working on. It's particularly interesting, I think, for science fiction fans and fans of fantasy and people who want to create settings in those genres. There's a whole host of fantastic examples of worlds people have created on the site that I'm sure you'll be able to see flying across your screen as we speak. In fact, we've recently been using World Anvil as part of some background work for the Sojourn to create internal timeline documents for the Frontier War and various other pieces of fiction that you'll be hearing more about in the future. This one really is very on-brand for Space Dock, and I think it really is something that a lot of you creative folks might want to check out. And we really are in desperate need of new ideas in the genre right now to break us out of the rut of endless Star Trek and Star Wars remakes. So hopefully this will provide some help to those of you who are looking to bring new ideas into the genre. Please do check out the link in the description, you'd be supporting Space Dock, and you'd be supporting original fiction, which is never a bad thing. Thank you for watching, this is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Dock. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now, or in the description below, for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment, and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel. 